My name is Hervé Constant, and I am a French artist based in London. I was born in Casablanca, Morocco, into a family which had a wide range of cultural influences. I studied acting in Toulon, in the south of France, and in Paris. I came to London in the late 70s to improve my knowledge of the English-speaking theatre. My first impression of London was that of a place much quieter, more personal, where people allowed you to be who you wanted to be. It is also during this period that I started painting and drawing a lot. I was spending more and more time with my new passion for visual art. I work in East London, in Acne, where my studio is located. I've lived there for several years. My studio is part of a large complex run by SPACE, an organization whose role is to support artists. I've been fortunate to be included in a number of Biennale's art events occurring every two years around the world, such as St. Petersburg, Russia, Istanbul, Turkey, and Nice, France. In Nice, I was awarded the first prize for painting. Some recent festivals I took part in, the Festival Water Tower Art Fest in Sofia, Bulgaria. The work is entitled uh, the Dream, Five Minutes Sound Installation, a four artist exhibition called Rit Large in Los Angeles, California, The Mystical Self at Verona Art Fair in Italy, an exhibition of short films. I remember that when I started painting, I focused on existential subjects describing certain absurdities in life. These were often done in a figurative manner. The topics were often very dark. I work in different parts of the studio and focus on different themes in each area. That means some in acoustic, a mix of oil paint and wax, others with acrylic uh, paint or oil, and in between drawings are done with charcoal. I can mention three that interested me. A large painting, five minutes, five by three meters, called The Flight of Icarus, made for the French Navy in Toulon. When I was fortunate to receive a first prize in painting at the Nice Biennale in 1983, at the same time, I was shortlisted by the jury of the National Navy to be considered to paint a very large canvas. I decided to present for the competition a sketch depicting the flight of Icarus. 
my aim was to describe symbolically the tragedy of his flight. The story of Icarus comes from ancient Greek mythology. Icarus was trying to escape an island prison by flying with wings made of wax and feathers. By flying too high, a symbol for ambition, he went too close to the sun. The wax on his wings melted and he fell into the sea. I was fascinated by Icarus's enthusiasm and uh, his willingness to fly close to the sun and reach towards the god. The second is Eden. When I got back in London around 1987, I was fortunate to be supported by an English collector who continued to buy a few of my paintings. When he moved to a country house named Eden, he asked a number of chosen artists to create a work on the subject. At that time, I was interested in artists such as Giotto, Masaccio, artists living before the Renaissance period. I knew that Masaccio had created the mural on the theme of Adam and Eve. My proposal was to create something along the similar lines, and this was selected. The last one that I would like to mention here is a series of paintings based upon tarot cards. The cards originate in European card games from the 15th century. Since then, the imagery of tarot has been used as a means of predicting a person's future or spiritual state. The painting isn't a recent one. It is called in French Oreille de Madame Mermet. That means ear of Madame Mermet. I am interested by the morbid. Not especially by the morbid, but I like things uh, unusual. Basically, she was murdered and had enormous ears. Another painting from that series called uh, For Even Sec is a painting who was shown recently in Los Angeles, an installation. My painting was remade on a very large scale and four artists were invited to participate. The show was based uh, on text. Mine was like a cry by someone wanting to be prevented from killing. I found it very tragic and uh, moving, even if the text might come across as funny. Family Nest is a charcoal drawing on paper. It is a recent drawing. The name of this one is and Ballet, called, uh, it is based from video stills on paper. The last one is a charcoal drawing called Children Playing. They are using cones to play, not realizing 
the Ku Klux Klan image it conveys. Homage to Bosnia. A lot of things around me inspire me. I observe and sometimes a small incident will inspire me for a long time. An example, I was invited to go to Bosnia shortly after the war with a few artists. It was a very inspiring experience and one which had stayed with me for a long time. We were four artists selected by a Balkans Art Link. This allowed me, allowed us, sorry, to travel across the country, seeing the ravages of the war and to stay among the locals working as we went. I took a lot of photos which of places which had been burned and destroyed as well as traces of shooting. When I returned to London, I immediately began to develop a series of related photographs. These gave me enough material for an exhibition for, an, for or paintings, photography and prints. My work is based on my deep curiosity about human thought, human motivation and behavior. The artist book Killing derived from my Bosnian experience and explores the darker hidden side of human thought, seeking delving deeper into the core of the human consciousness. My individual portrayed in this book feels himself lost through the countless number of people who have made humanity. He feels a person without significance, but he has the feeling that he has the right to be recognized, acknowledged. Later, I just thought I could produce an artist book and a film on the subject. I had not worked before with video, but I obtained the video camera and I decided to produce a project which involved a friend wrapping and unwrapping a long black cloth around his head.
For me, it is the same thing as a photo or a painting. Some of my work may, for example, be better understood or interpreted symbolically. We can see in this painting the face of the French poet Arthur Rimbaud. His gaze is facing toward the horizon in infinite. Below its face is a geometric form in a shape of a box. This drawing represents the coffin drawn by the poet when he was suffering from illness during one of his last journeys in a foreign land. It is also the symbol of the death of the poet. He was 37 years old when he died. The Tower. It is true that people can be led and manipulated since a lot of symbols come from the unconscious. But my sense is that very often we make our own choice as regards the symbols painted. Certainly, the artist chooses the color which represents an expression or emotion. The tower card in tarot, for example, illustrates for me what is exciting in a creative process. The unknown is why I still feel a childlike excitement about this work, since there is a certain alchemy about it. It is because there is something that still surprises me, something that I don't know. Symbols have been with us for a very long time and their application is a natural one. I would describe the labyrinth painting as a symbol of a kind of loneliness, solitude. The priority for me is to discover what I'm saying and to find the means to say it. To do this requires a person to be oneself and not to worry too much about other people's negative or positive statements. To be true to yourself, however, is often the very thing that other people do not like about you, since we are conditioned by upbringing, culture, nationality, and education. When I paint the gun, it will show the value of being at peace with my own mental functions. Humans can go through a phase of experiencing a fear of their own potential for violence. So it remains something very disturbing in us all. Why are we like this? Simply because we are not at peace with ourselves. The gun, emblematic of this, can represent thoughts no longer hidden, thoughts that still make us feel powerful, but not dangerous because the gun has become an external or visual factor. That is one of the reasons why so many 
or the things append are symbolic. Take, for example, the suitcase. It has been nowhere and everywhere accompanying someone on the journey. Nowhere is its home, yet everywhere is its home. The essence is it may be descriptive of a thematic narrative. Sometimes it is a definition of political problems or feelings. Sometimes it conveys a social statement. Most are about communication. Although I may have different interests along the way, in so far as one travels, one more or less arrives at the same point of departure.